Hello everyone, my name is Ramses Leon. Uh, welcome back to another presentation. I'm the chief researcher of UPIDE, the Parapsychological Unit of Research, Dissemination and Education, and a founding member of the CISC, the Research Center for Synergy and Consciousness. I want, first of all, to thank my two research colleagues, uh, Alfredo Silva and Alejandro Alvarez, for their support in this research. So before we start, this is a presentation about upward. So what is an upward? We can define an upward as the anomalous transference or appearance of an object to another location. According to Brody, the main difference between upwards and materializations is that the, the latter seems to involve a process of creation. In other words, the objects do not seem to exist beforehand. They also seem to exist only for a short period of time. On the other time, on the other hand, it has been assumed that upwards exist elsewhere, in this reality or another, and that they are teleported to the new location or just appear close to the medium or the person who is supporting them or related to those supports. Asports are the opposite of an upward as the perception of an object disappearing from where it was. And this seem to be quite common with upwards seemingly appearing and then disappearing, asporting at a later time. Presumable instances of this phenomenon have been documented mainly in physical mediumship cases during the spiritualism apogee between 1850 and 1920. Mediums like Franeklosky, Inuidi, Inuida-san, Eusefe Palladino, Daniel Holm, the Fox Sisters, and Einar Nielsen were reported to manifest upwards during their sentences or their sittings. Upwards have been scared in the last century, but nonetheless, they have happened in the presence of sitter groups like the Felix Experimental Group or the Surat. Individuals such as Amir Amidon in Brazil, Katie the Golden Leaf Lady and Uri Geller in the United States and Shang Beshong in China have also been studied regarding their apparent abilities to transfer objects through spatial barriers without non-physical mechanisms. So, Let's start up uh, to talk about the case at hand. Uh, many of you might recall it from last year's convention, but I'll uh, recall some of the main uh, approaches or the first approaches. The case at hand develops in Mexico City surrounding a 56 uh, years old married salesman whom we will refer as HM and his wife, a 45 years old administrator who we will refer as LP. Very, they are wealthy but not rich, unaffiliated with mediumship and with presumable instances of upwards since October 2016. I want to mention some sociocultural background about HM. He has had paranormal experiences since his youth, has been interested in collecting coins in his childhood, and previous affective partners have been involved with witchcraft. After his second divorce and an unsettling breakup with a former colleague, he suffered an economical and laboral crisis fueled by emotional distress, family dis disappointments, and ended up having suicidal tendencies. Seeking an escape from his situation, disguised as academic growth, he found himself getting a grant to study traditional Chinese medicine in a Red Cross hospital in China. With a one-way ticket for, to a foreign country purchased by his future wife, LP, he studied in the Xiongfa Hospital in the Huaihua province in China but soon found himself limited by his economical restraints. Trying to find some meaning, he ended up studying Reiki in Japan and acupuncture in Turkey, where LP eventually joined him and helped him get back to Mexico. They eventually fell in love and have been together since 2016, around the time the first upwards begin. Trying to understand these upwards, he has studied at the Kessler Unit in Edinburgh and the Rhine Research Center in North Carolina, the United States, where we were informed about this case and had been working with both uh, since then. Now, let me tell you a little bit about LP. She's 11 years younger than HM, works as a business administrator, and lived in Brazil when she was younger. At uh, the beginning, she was hermetic and tight with the research team, but has progressively been more open to us uh, as the time has passed. She had had many, many sick experiences since her childhood, reporting to hear the voices and intentions of the deceased in several occasions. At least three of her relatives have reported to experience some type of psychic ability or phenomena, and uh, she has participated in candomblé or Yoruba-based religion rituals in her past. It's worth mentioning that she has a protection doll over three feet tall, filled with her fingernails, hair, coins, and her mother's gold necklace, which was covered in snake blood to complete the protection ritual. The doll is located in Ben room, and it's been reported to manifest individual agency in several instances. We'll discuss this at a later slide. In this first phase, we proceed with 
uh, we proceeded with a cooperative inquiry group paradigm, including mainly HM, but also LP in the design and operationalization of the study. We included the several qualitative and quantitative measurements like the installation of six HD cameras, all with 15 meter infrared and audio recording capabilities. And uh, the storage allowed us to review up to 10 days of continuous recordings of each device, at least at the beginning. We also conducted a video analysis of these recordings and supplementary videographic material provided by both HM and LP, including 30 minutes before and 15 minutes after each event. We also realized a numismatic analysis of the coins and several unstructured interviews with them, their family and employees. Neurological, psychological and clinical studies were included for HM, as we suspected he was the main agent at the beginning of the study and are pending uh, for LP. Finally, most of the phenomenology of each report has been documented, including the object's picture, description, data, data, time, their mood, location, and subject perception of the experience. Regarding HM studies, uh, as we mentioned last year, the AEG results were normal without focal or generalized epileptical activity. The um, uh, magnetic resonance exploration showed no evidence of intracranial hemorrhage in part midline shift and, or mass effect. The clinical analyses were mostly normal, though a pre-diabetic diagnosis was found. The complete blood count showed no relevant alteration. The urine analysis and, and theory profiles were within normal limits. And this was run by at least six different medical doctors and clinicians in one of the best hospitals in Mexico City. 14 cognitive and projective psychometric tests were applied to HM at the Instituto Mexicano de Neurociencias, which you can explore on the right side of the slide. According to the Wechsler scale, HM had an average brilliant intelligence, and further exploration revealed a depressive episodes and the uh, diagnosis for uh, attention and deficit and hyperactivity disorder. The psychological reports also mentioned an emotional dysregulation associated with a feminine figure, probably driven by the lack of emotional support and distancing of his mother before passing. There is nothing particularly relevant to the apart manifestations here, as far as we can tell. The apported coins are usually well preserved coins from Mexico and other countries, but metals, withered flowers, and even apples have been reported to appear as well. Furthermore, wraps, whispers, scents, uh, and different odors and orbs has been reported by him, uh, LP, their family, members, and employees. And the phenomena has endured through three different houses and with different family and employee configurations. At least 61 apported coins has been, have been documented inside their houses since the onset of the phenomena, and another 42 since the installation of the cameras, which you can see on this left side of the slide. These are all uh, new upward coins since the uh, last presentation last year. From the foreign co coins, both have visited countries which use the respective currency, except Czech Republic. These ones they haven't visited. Regarding the Mexican coins, it's worth mentioning that most of the apported coins are of 20 pesos, and only 0.5% of all the coins in our country are of that denomination, uh, which makes this a statistically significant difference if apported coins follow a Gaussian distribution among currencies circulation. Here's a, here are the planes of um, HM and LP's home, and the camera location and angles were arranged to maximize the possibility of recording the most active areas of the house stated by HM at the beginning of the study. You can see three cameras were installed in the first floor, in the living room, the dining room, and the middle of the stairs. On the right plane, you can see the second floor uh, where most of the activity happened. There's a studio in the lower left corner, the room number two in the upper left, and the main room in the right side with another camera, which right now is inactive. It's worth noting that the stairs camera can reach uh, this part of the floor as well. On the third floor, there's one camera, uh, the washing room and an exit to a closed garden. Finally, you can see the general visibility of the cameras here. All the cameras were installed on June 12, 2021. And since last September, the cameras for the camera for the main room has been disabled for privacy reasons. It sounds reasonable considering the length of the study, but that around 40% of the coins have appeared here, which is a shame, but it's just another limitation of the study. We have several videos of different anomalous instances, but the most relevant videos of the analysis include three recordings where coins were barely out of range of the camera, four where the coins appear on camera, but the point of origin wasn't covered, and two where a camera recorded the procedure of the coin being apported in real time. Uh, 
this is the first one on September 21st, where only HP and HM and LP were in the house. HM was on the room two, seeing the TV. LP is were was reported to be on the main room cleaning. It's worth mentioning that the coin makes a bouncing sound 1.5 seconds before appearing. And there's a zoom square here um, where you can see the coin being apported. This is just a zoom of this section of here. So let's watch it. Okay, let's watch it again. And now let's watch it in a slow motion. Okay, so um, we also have uh, the angle of the uh, upstairs covered where we can see there is no one throwing the coin. And also it's quite evident that uh, the coin is falling. So let's move to the second video. Uh, on October 22nd, where only HM and LP were in the house, HM was in the bathroom while LP was in the main room. And the coin makes a sound, uh, a bouncing sound 1.7 seconds before appearing as Bonsi, the dog, comes closer to it. Visually, it seems as if the coin was materialized from his nose, but that seems just an artifact from the quality and the distance. On the right image, you can see a seven second comparison between the coin appearance. And if only Bonzi the Duck could tell us his experience, we might know a little bit more about the phenomena. Okay, so let's move on. As mentioned before, there has been some anomalous experiences other than the aborted coins. On October 25th, uh, only LP was in the house cleaning. A roaming sequence can be heard, and it's reported and analyzed that the TV in the room was off. Also, it would be difficult for the sewer system to make such elaborate sounds. Let's hear it in here. And uh, 30 seconds later, while she's cleaning, LP asks, what is it? As the drumming sound stops, then you can, or you could see her talking, taking her phone and calling HM to tell us about the situation. So um, let's move on. The, so the phase uh, one of this study uh, ended up with a few obstacles. For example, we tried to make a forensic analysis of the coins, but uh, financial limitations, time constraints, and the lack of a video recordings of the coins we would like to analyze were quite troublesome. Furthermore, since last October, there has been a continuous disconnection of the cameras. This have happened even when neither uh, HM or LP are at home. And analyzing some instances of this, there doesn't seem to be any person, animal, or entity getting close to the light connectors before we lose the video. Moreover, there has at least been one instance where I was talking through the phone with HM, watching, watching him reconnect uh, the first floor cameras, and then losing the real-time streaming as he walked into the kitchen. When I told him I couldn't see him anymore, he told me that he left the kitchen again, and as suspected, the cameras were disconnected again. The camera's uh, memory card have also disappeared in a few uh, instances in at least five of the six cameras, forcing us to move to a cloud service, which is uh, better, but also troublesome. All this summed with emerging negatively perceived phenomena, like the tumbling of the furniture, and a decreasing motivation to keep the study running and the cameras recording have affected the quality and control and opportunities to obtain more interesting data. Furthermore, the agency of the disconnected cameras, the disappearance of memory cards, uh, seem more related to the cons to the conscious or unconscious desires of HM and LP, making them hesitant and worried during these past months. Finally, a scientific approach helped HM in reassuring he wasn't going mad, but parapsychology is not prepared to answer the questions that drove HM and LP to seek help in the first place. Questions like, why is this happening to us? And is there something we should be doing? 
uh, with this phenomenon remains unanswered. Even if I'm not a practicing psychologist, I learned as many of us here, the ethical considerations of our labor, prioritizing the health and well-being uh, of a person before the scientific benefits of a study. At this point, I consider that both HM and LP have helped science in more ways that we could freely ask of any participant in a study. And we try to design a clinical approach that might allow us to report any additional findings while focusing in answering the requested questions. Therefore, we changed the phase two approach we had planned and asked three mediums, one certified with the Wimbridge Research Center and one shaman for their help. Blindness protocols and structured the methodologies were desired, but were delegated to a second place trying not to hinder the acknowledged discovery of both HM and LP. We plan to realize two online interviews with each, uh, with each psychic, one only with me to explain the process and one with LP, HM, and available members of UPIDE so they could try to find out some answers. We acted more as a consultant agency than a research unit, keeping quiet and unseen during the second interview, but advising HM and LP at the end of what information might have happened due to body language, cold readings, previously available information, among others. From the three mediums, one heard the word Santeria, which is an Afro-American religion, even when she had not heard that word before or knew what it meant. Another medium uh, said that LP wasn't answering the call for her Santeria-related roots. The three mentioned that there was a non-human consciousness linked to the phenomena, and two mentioned that it wasn't ill-intended. Two mediums mentioned both LP and HM were co-creators of the phenomena. One mentioned that LP was the main force or fuel of it, while two mentioned that HM was a trigger, which might also be backed up by the instances where it seems an upward is linked to his emotional states in the phenomenology analysis. We were a little disappointed as following, following their intuition, HM and LP didn't want to proceed to a second interview with one of the mediums and they didn't accept the proposal of a shaman to go to their home and try to communicate, to communicate with the probably entity involved. There seems to be a psychological symbolism related to these support cases. For example, Brody theorized that the brass foil of the gold leaf lady might be an unconscious mockery as a type of fool's gold, ridiculing her husband's desire to obtain something of value from her emerging psychic skills. And we cannot discard the relevance of Sai's Baba religious motivations reflected in his upwards, such as the manifestation of the sacred ash bibhitu. In our case, HM had a severe life and economical crisis before the onset of the phenomena, literally wishing for money to fall from the sky. Furthermore, consider that he collected coins since she was a kid. On the other hand, the lack of stability in LP's past might have produced expectations linked to monetary safety and manifested as what HM have achieved before. And actually, this was something that one of the men mediums mentioned, that as her feelings for him arose, it might have added pressure to the already economical imbalance at the start of the relationship. Currently, both have a very good economical stability, but the underlying psychodynamic might have changed to living in a magical reality and thus not wanting to risk the destruction of their living dream by trying to really communicate to whatever additional agency if any, is involved in the phenomena. And finally, regarding this agency, the onset of the phenomena is coherent with the poltergeist literature, but there also seems to be a spiritual or mediumship awakening in progress for both HM and LP. On the other hand, when a coin fell, HM tends to shout out elf as a, like a little goblin or a positive elf creature as both uh, HM and LP seem to agree, at least temporary, that it's an elf who's bringing them the coins. Therefore, I want to mention again the volatility of the upward agency in some instances. Coins have failed upon HM's face, and sometimes the movement of objects have caused them fear and distress, breaking cherished objects and disrupting their dreamish magic reality. We could also put in the mix the trickster phenomena and even Danta, the protection doll embedded with ritualistic intentions that you can see in the picture. I can say which of these agencies is more probable, but from what I've analyzed in these years, I'm afraid I can no longer discard the idea of a non-human consciousness being involved as well. I guess time will tell. I want to acknowledge finally uh, some of the people here involved, the Cisco Pide, Jennifer Tornado, Perez Quintero, Aida Pineda, all the people involved in the hospital Angeles Domas, 
here are my references and there's some contact information. It's uh, finally worth mentioning that HM have a bachelor degree and, and a master's degree. So he doesn't only study alternative practices. And furthermore, it seems some of the coins are losing some of their mint condition. So we are getting some coin shape recipients to store them safely and continue reviewing the process if there's any alteration. Finally, and for full disclosure, we are not paid to do this research and neither HM or OP want to obtain monetary gains or fame for participating in this study. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm open to questions.